Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. The best PlayStation 2 emulator on Android, Eater SX2, just got an update, and there's something you should know before you update it. Let's get started. Alright, to kick things off, we'll start out this video with a PSA or a pro tip, something I highly recommend doing and something you should definitely know. Eater SX2 is still in early access. It receives updates quite frequently. It's very active in terms of development. Things do change, new features are introduced, and sometimes when you update it, things break. So I do recommend going into the top right hand corner of this app on the Google Play Store. Once you are here, there is an option for enable auto updates. Just go on ahead and uncheck that. As good as it is to keep your app up to date with Eater SX2, I recommend doing that manually. So when you see an update, just go in and manually update it. And this way it'll give you time to fix whatever you need to, to change whatever you need to in order to prepare for the update. For example, this latest update for Eater SX2 will completely ruin your save states. So it might give you a chance to actually save your games to the memory card before you worry about losing anything. So with that being said, let's go on ahead here and take a look at what was introduced with this update. Old save states are not compatible with this update. Exactly why you disable auto update on this. Uh, add controller mapping and hotkeys. Cords are supported. This is huge. If you've got a Bluetooth controller paired to your device, you can now individually configure the buttons on it. Expose more GS options. GS stands for Graphic Synthesizer. Uh, support trilinear filtering and software blending in Vulkan Renderer. If you're using Vulkan, this is a pretty huge addition. If you have rendering glitches, disable texture barriers and advanced settings. Next up here, fix issues when combining texture preloading and GPU palette textures. Non-DSB path for Vulkan Renderer. Again, more Vulkan improvements. Add aspect ratio and software render FMV switch, fix const prop bug in recompiler. So the big takeaways from this update, in my opinion, are the fact that they've added controller mapping, which is huge, and they've also improved graphics options and improved things if you're using Vulkan. After updating Eater SX2, when you boot it up, you'll be greeted with this beautiful update message. Update notes, this Eater SX2 update includes support for multiple controllers. If you experience performance loss after the update, please try resetting changes. If you are using a gamepad controller, you must rebind it, otherwise it will no longer function. If you want to rebind your controller now, I'd recommend clicking yes. And to find these settings later, just go into the controller settings on the main menu. And from here under port 1, you'll have access to every single button you want to remap. Now to see some of the other updates, click on app settings from the main menu. And then feel free to play around with some of these options under the graphics tab. At this point in time, it's pretty hard to recommend the absolute best settings for Eater SX2 considering each phone handles this emulator differently and it's still so early on in development. I do recommend using OpenGL as the renderer because you'll probably get the best performance with it. But anyways, that is all I've got for this video. If you want a full tutorial for Eater SX2, I've got you covered with a link in the description below. Let me know your thoughts on Eater SX2 in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts about this update in the comments below. Are you excited about the controller mapping? If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.